right. Something like this, I think. Hmm. Overwatch, as always. Oh god. Gunov with exertion is even more beastly. Get a kill for Aleo, why not? Does he also sing about himself? No. Alright, backbiter. I mean, let's do that again. Uh, what? You fucking what, eight? Still not having any of that? And that's him dead. I have a feeling he's going to walk through there. <laughs> that ballot. Alright, maybe he's just going to have a stab at Aleo. Maybe that too. <laughs> Actually, Overwatch gets better the less enemies there are, huh? Let's just have her knock them all out. Oh! Oh, he still gets hit by the arrow trap, even though he got knocked back. That's neat. <laughs> Fucking Imba. Combo. Just got wrecked there, huh? The fighters fall and others nod their approval of you defending your clan. You're tired and irritated as you shuffle back to the front of the caravan. Discover what these battle lines are all about, Ruger says. The king shut his people out. His clans are here to see, what it, he, to see that he feeds and protects his people as he's supposed to. They've cho and they've chose, chosen? Chosen me to lead that course. Laughs at your incredulous look. Just as surprised, but I need to talk to you in private. You not, and the two of you enter a large, empty tent. The tent flaps close, leaving you and Druga alone, both armed. No need to mince words now, is there? I know you want to kill me. Only when I think about how you betrayed us. Then let's be clear. If either of us leaves this tent without the other, 
fields around us will turn red. Then talk quickly. I don't want to look. I don't want to look at you longer than I have to. <laughs> I wasn't making that stuff outside about about the king. He really has shut all of us out. It started a few months ago when he started stockpiling food and slowing trade. Once the wealthy families were all pulled inside the walls, he shut the gates. The only thing that he said is that he can't feed anyone. Everyone. Oh, and his archers fire on everyone who gets close. Watch Ruger closely while deciding what to say. Why should I believe you at all? Because you see all of these people gathered. Do you think they're all out here for fun? No, but maybe you don't know the whole story. If you're the king and your people are starving at your gates, do you let them all in or keep them out? Don't answer. We both know you'd let them in. Unless you knew something you weren't telling them. Either way, the people have a right to an answer for the food they send him in Ar and Aberang's protection. I think you'd agree the food and walls belong to the kingdom, not the king. To what end? That's what the upcoming battle aims to find out. You want to go to war to ask the king a question? No, I want to go to war and make the king answer for a few que answer a few, qu few questions. Like, why do he leave his people outside the walls to starve? So how do you plan to break down the walls? That's the last thing I want to do. We need those walls to stop the Dredd and whatever else is coming behind them. But if we have to destroy them, we will. Maybe the Mendes inside can repair any damage. There might be ways past these first few walls, though. But the Black Wall? The governor, the governor just shakes his head. How did he come to lead the clans anyway? Borsgard is the, was the largest human town next to the capital. You don't become governor of a place like that without certain skills and powerful friends. What are those certain skills? The governor just smiles. Um, you watch Ruga closely while deciding what to say. So this war is unavoidable? Probably. I officially meet with the king in a few hours to either come to an agreement or pull our banners from his. I won't be surprised if you're invited too. The mighty Sunderslayer and army. If so, make your decisions carefully. Stone is not exactly threatening. Not exactly. You move to the tent flaps and both of you open them simultaneously so that no fight breaks out. Hmm, so a couple of... A couple of... Um, options here. Do we have a market? Well, we could be training more. Fighters, I guess. We need... I mean, for the achievement, we need like 407. Which would take us... A while. Oh, and, oh, oh, and we spent a lot of our renown, huh? And there's only ten, 10 total available anyways. Alright. Never mind. Never mind. Also, there aren't any level 10 items. Alright. Yeah, I'll get them. Why not? It's a day more. Morale's still great. Let's, I mean, let's have a look at the training. Come in and ha ha let's have a look at you, Sven, the trainer says. Just wanting to swing, swing at each other, Sven asks, or are you here to actually learn something? Um. Why can we just do 50, though? Probably because of the limited supplies we have. Also, 50 won't make a difference. Right then. Let's talk. 
Skathach and Derdryu pace nervously, keeping their distance from humans, Val or other horseborn. Raesh patrols around the two a short distance away, nodding to you briefly. Is everything okay? Many mans, more than we know live. You stop to look around at the thousands of tents in the fields and hundreds of homes beyond the capital's walls. I'm from a small village. I'm not used to seeing so many people either. Maybe herd too big, so many mouths hungry. If some dead, more easy to feed herd. Skathach stomps the ground and says a few shrill notes to Dodrio before, before turning to you. Dodrio forgets we are not of same thinking with mans. If you think Big Herd is right, we will think Big Herd is right. But what do you think is right, Skathach? The male horseborn looks up at Abrang for a few moments while swishing his tail in thought. I think Big Herd kick each other in small fields. Points to Abrang. Small fields behind walls. You thank them for talking and offer them a few calming words before departing. Alright. Meeting tent. Oh, that's uh, story progression, I guess, right? Um, Trigvi. The crazy guy. The former cragsman is trying to lure something out of a hole with a small piece of dried meat on a string. He leaves it dangling by his side while standing to talk. Looks like you're keeping busy. I'm playing fox and hare with a vole. Do you think foxes ever play Trigvi and vole? No. Trigvi looks disappointed. Do you have any ideas on how to keep two groups from killing each other? Any powders or relics or crazy schemes? He reaches into his tunic and grabs something, pauses, releases whatever it is, and shakes his head. People kill each other every day. Just enjoy the show. But if it comes to war, I don't think either side will leave us out of it. Trigby thinks about what you're saying, tapping a fingernail against his teeth. He looks at his finger, sneers, and spits. Killing kings requires a lot of lives. It's just as easy to kill clansmen instead. Either way, some will praise you and others will throw it and others will throw dung at your face. Or you could collect all the dung in a giant hill, stand on top of it, and be your own king. As you watch him crouch back down to the hole, you wonder what possessed you to speak to him. Yeah. Now there's only a Leo left. The skull is trying a dyed strip of cloth into his daughter's hair. He's tying a dyed strip of cloth into his daughter's hair, but sends her off, sends her off as you sends her off to play as you near. You've come all this way for war. With luck, I might change their minds. Be the reed that would stop the wind. You get a lyric for every moment, don't you? Of course, plenty of us, plenty before us have been in similar situations and written about it. We only think our lives are unique. And if peace is not an option, is there a skull song for that? Plenty, but I'll tell you what I do. What, but, but I'll tell you what I do. Save the families who can't save themselves. I can't imagine if my wife and children were left out here. Like they don't deserve the same protection as others. Leo's words flood your thoughts as you walk away. Hmm. So I guess this is probably le the last chance to upgrade our heroes and the like. Twenty one. We have exactly twenty one. So we could upgrade upgrade either Hakon or Gunulf. Let's upgrade Hakon. Mm. And give him and give him what? No wait. Item rank plus two? Oh, because he has two to all skills or something, right? Region one willpower. I mean, same here. 20% percent to resist four armor damage. A 
I don't exactly know what the hit chance is for. I mean, you have a 100% hit chance, right? Unless you have a lot less strength than they have armor. But that's not going to be the case for, for him. Also, I'm still not sure what puncture is. To avoid armor attack. Uh, I mean, I guess I'll try hunker down. So we do have a second level 10 at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a pretty good item for him, I think. Still, I don't think we have anything better than the three break. That could be interesting as well. Wait, doesn't the Eagle have a worse version of this? Oh no, that's just plus three armor on rest. Could still be good though. Let's bracelet. We still have that one. I think I'll mm, I'll try out this obsidian bell. And that's gonna be our setup, I think. Right then, big decisions coming up. Before you head towards the large tent, Odd Life stops you. Are you certain you're ready for what could happen out there? Worried look is infectious. The king may be a decent man, but I doubt he's kept his throne by always following the rules. I'm prepared. I'm glad to hear the confidence in your voice, Odd Life says. Just be careful. I'll be back here with the rest of the clan if you need me. You smile and make your way past the line of clansmen, marking the boundary of the peaceful bit. The voices coming from under the tent are loud, animated. Best we could. You've done well. I never thought I'd see my son again. Well, we've all had easier journeys. King's cheerful mood lessens. He's about to say something when he sees you approaching. Who's this? Greetings, King Meinolf. My name is Alette, and I'm from Skogur. Ludin steps forward. Father, this is the Sundra Slayer I told you about. King Meinolf glances at you and sighs. Son, you can introduce your pretty country girl later. You and Ludin both turn red, but you temper your anger as the king addresses Hakon. Pains me to hear you've lost so many of your hardy warriors, Hakon. But tell me, where's your wondrous kender, Vognir? Vognir died protecting your son. I was Vognir's kender. To Yondra's death at Einertoft, I'm king of the few remaining Val. The king says nothing, contemplating the news. Your, vo your walls are the last hope for my people. No sense in denying it. I understand. And of course you'll have refuge here. The last I can do for you... The last I can do for bringing my son back... The least I can do for bringing my son back alive... It'll be tight, but I'm sure we can find a place for you. King Meinolf, let us here is just as much responsible for the prince's safe return. She has quite a few clansmen. Careful, Val King. This is the human capital, and my generosity is already stretched thin. Akon looks at you and shrugs. Tell me, girl, why are you leading an entire caravan of humans and horseborn? Why didn't one of the men take point? My name is Alette, King Meinolf. 
And what difference does that make? The difference between me showing you respect or not. Don't try to make me feel small by calling me girl or child. But you are a... I'm the clan leader of Skogur and I fought to save every one of my clansmen. That is why they follow me. King stares at you and finally nods. I can see the resolve in your eyes. You've seen things beyond your years. Unfortunately, it doesn't cha change how many Abraham can support. Only now do you see Ruga and the two dozen fighters approaching. The king's guards look concerned. All right. Nah, sacrificing a sheep, a sheep it seems. Ruga. Minolf. I should have killed you when I had the chance. You tried, remember? Did the Sunder Slayer convince you to open your gates to our people? You will never enter my gates again. I'd hoped you died in Borsgard. How is it that you've come to speak for all of these clans? The people you've turned your back on? Seems they needed a leader you could they could trust. Again, how have you come to speak for them? Did you fool them like the people of that rotten town you governed? The only fool here is the outnumbered king believing he still has a say in what happens now. Don't make us breach your walls. We we'll just have to repair them once we're inside. Point out the approaching darkness. I doubt either of you will be in charge of anything when that darkness washes over us. I've got the Vulcan Mender seeing to that inside. They'll come up with something. And even if they fail, I'll still be able to watch this bastard fall to the darkness from my walls. I asked to chew hard off the mine of I know. Let, look at your people out there. Our people. They need food and clean water, not that poison in the river. They need protection. Cannot allow this king to keep us from safety after all this way. She doesn't have to. I'll find a place for the people under your banner, Alat. A place inside the walls alongside the Val. A place this fan man will never be allowed again. That's enough. Both of you are bickering like children instead of leaders. And you, giant, joining this king after all we did to keep your people alive. Traitor! Akon growls and flexes his grip on his axe. All parties look angry and tense, and then they look at you. My banner, my people, are my only concern. Good. I'm granting you and your people, even those horseborn, into my walls. But move quickly. I thought I taught you better, Alet. This isn't how you play the game. Mm. Not so sure about this, as much as I dislike. Yeah, Alright, let's journey. As much, much as I dislike Ruga, he has a point, I guess. Ruga blows three quick bursts into a war horn. Look back and are shocked to see an ambush on your caravan. With no defenses built, your tents quickly go up in flames. Humans and Val burning. What? What? Without warning, Ruga pulls his cloak pin dagger and lunges at King Minol who shifts slightly, the blade only piercing his side. Before anyone can react, Ruga slinks behind his fighters who are charging you, Hakon and King Meinolf. Everyone to the walls, you shout. Protect the king and the Val. Hakon nods his appreciation, just before the clamor of war envelops you both. Hmm. Yep. We're ready for battle. Ambush, mine Olf. You're wounded. Just a flesh wound. Though I feel odd. Death stay Ruga. Rally the troops. He's been poisoned, I bet. Alright. Where are the enemies? Are we still inside the tent? Or what is this? 
So just down here. Some cracksmen. Here as well. Yeah, I'm gonna try and deny them this flank. Wow. Ruger's even been recruiting cragsmen. Heh. <laughs> Trying to do some damage here, huh? Oh, damn it. Well, that's something to do for Hakon then. to the rescue. What? Too much deflection. Too much deflection. Fucking hell. Oh, he's only at 13 strength. Oh, that's not so good. Uh, let's have him go here. Akon can take care of the others. There's a crit. Number one. King Minolf regains his footing and falls back towards Arborang's walls as his forces rush past him and into the fray. You wave the banner of Skogur and your clan surrounds you. To the gates, you shout over the clan's clash of axes and hammers on shields. 
By the time your caravan is inside Abrang's outer wall, the gate is mostly compromised. Ruger's forces are on your heels, and they brought bears. Cut them off or they'll overrun us, shouts King Meinolf, before wincing and grabbing his side where Ruger stabbed him. Mm. And archers behind those barricades. Wardlife and your other archers find protected positions and more arrows are laid at their feet. She nods to you and the battle begins. So I can't use Wardlife now, I guess. Um, also, Nid is gone. Alright then. Mm, I guess I'll take Aleo again.